Hi, I'm Coach Cowland, and in this presentation we're going to talk very briefly about conservation laws. So, um, things that can be conserved. Um, when we look at physical properties, there's a number of physical properties that can be conserved, and mathematically this is really helpful. If we know that what happens before is the same as what happens afterwards, we can mathematically work out what's going on. Um, and um, there's a number of things that are conserved within what we call systems and we'll talk about what systems are in a couple of minutes but so energy and um, mass they are linked and related they can be conserved more energy than mass but energy um, linear momentum that is the the uh, way momentum happen the, the, whatever happens to the momentum of a system before anything happens has got to be the same as whatever happens to that linear momentum after whatever it has, has that has happened. Rotational momentum. You may have uh, observed um, models of the solar system, for example, and everything seems to spin in that same direction in the same way. Almost, almost everything. Anyway, there are a couple of exceptions, but this is uh, an example of rotational momentum. That is, once once something starts to spin, it's rotational momentum is conserved and it carries on. Charge, so charge is on, on, proto on protons and on electrons. Obviously there's no charge on neutrons, but um, if you were to look at them subatomically, you would see that charge is still conserved. So however much charge there is at the beginning is the same as however much charge there is at the end. And subatomic spin, um, subatomic particles have what is called a, a um, physical property called spin and that spin is conserved um, it's a it's a little complex to go into right now but it is one of the things that is conserved and that uh, helps us when we're doing calculations with physical properties so um, I've mentioned systems before and uh, in order to, to understand conservation you need to understand when something is conserved and when something isn't and in order to do that we need to look at what are called systems open systems and closed systems so an open system is one where properties can be added and removed from it and um, because of this um, things that happen within the system don't necessarily add up to whatever happens before or afterwards. In this case, energy initial is not the same as energy final because energy may be leaving or entering the system which is uh, denoted by this box here. Um, so if energy and matter um, are free to come and go, then um, there's no way to tell what, uh, what the outcomes are after whatever the incident was that happened, say there was a collision in there or something like that, because you don't know how much has escaped and how much there was, even, even if you knew how much there was at the beginning. Now on the right here you see what's called a closed system, and in that closed system everything is trapped within it, which is really helpful. It means that the energy that you start with is the same as the energy that you end with. Right? It means that however much matter you had initially is the same as however much matter you'll end with. And everything else that is conserved should be conserved within it. Um, so within closed systems, we can calculate what's going on by working out if we know what's happening to one thing, we can work out what's happening to the other thing. Just like in a, uh, a mathematical equation, you have the left side of an equation is equal to the right side. Well, if the left side is the past and the right side is the future, then you know what happened in the past has to be the same as what happens in the future. That's basically conservation in closed systems. So to define a closed system, a closed system is uh, an object or a scenario is probably a better word, uh, where um, objects don't ex exchange matter with the surroundings and um, and don't experience external forces. It's, as you can imagine, external forces are around everywhere. Gravity is experienced everywhere on Earth, and even if it's not Earth's gravity, there is ex there is a gravitational experience from other planets. I mean, the tides uh, happen because of the Moon's gravitational forces. So you can see that um, it's very difficult to get to a place where there is a perfectly closed system. There's always changes going on based on, on influences from other forces. Um, there's not very many perfect closed systems, but we use closed systems as a model um, 
in, in physics a lot so that we can approximate what's going on. So um, like I said there's not very many examples of perfectly closed systems but um, but you could say that uh, if there's no forces applying to atoms that are inside a perfectly sealed and insulated container um, then that could be considered a closed system and um, any object that's moving at a constant velocity and is not experiencing any, any gravitational forces this is an extremely rare scenario maybe you have something on a perfectly horizontal table and because of that it's not experienced in the gravitational force of the earth which means that it is if and obviously there would have to be no friction um, so um, maybe that would be a perfect um, scenario and um, the most obvious one is the universe so the universe is a closed system because um, basically you can't go leave the system and there's no, nothing external to it so matter cannot leave it and there's nothing external to apply a force in towards it so whatever is in the system is perfectly conserved that system just happens to be extremely big though that's the universe there you go so when we're looking at um, nearly perfect systems places where we can ignore external effects um, like I said um, if you have a horizontal system and you have two carts here colliding horizontally and um, the, the system is balanced so that gravity doesn't have an effect, there's no slope there, then that would be a nearly perfect system. Of course, there may be other forces. There will almost certainly be some form of friction. Um, you can't take into consideration gravitational forces from other planets and that, but generally speaking, they will likely be so weak that it would be immeasurable or very difficult to notice um, a rocket fired in space where there's no gra where where the gravitational effects are negligible um, I can't say that there's no gravity there is gravity extends infinitely um, but you could get to points where the gravitational fields are very weak um, billiard balls on a pool table again it's a low friction surface and um, uh, the balls tend to move for a very long period of time because of that low friction surface and um, and and that results in a very nice approximation to a closed system okay that's it thanks for watching